I know that uh, apart from the teaching and everything, you're very engaged in, in, the, in the community down there in lots of other ways as well. And I know that one, one of the things you kind of wanted to talk about tonight was, I suppose, in some ways, the kind of systematic destruction of, the, of rural communities like where you live, isn't it? Well, I hate to start to come on and, and, and just be grumpy and be negative and whatever like that. I mean, and I just, I'm, I'm not a social commentator. I'm not somebody who sits behind a, a desk and invents an I think we've enough for them anyway. I think we have so, enough yeah, for them. Yeah. You know? Like I said, I've been in teaching, so I've been involved. Face. I'm at the coal yeah. face for the last 35, 40 years of sport in rural areas and whatever. Like that. I genuinely believed, I mean, let's go to politics for a start. I mean, I, I just thought Oh, jeez, let's not. Uh, well... <laughs> I'd like to put my analysis on a thing as does everyone else's <laughs> I, just say, you know, I just think it, you know, the, the way when Fianna Fáil, and I'm not a member of any party, but when they took would, over... Would you, have been, would you I'd associate you with being a Fianna Fáil supporter? Though, no, I'm roughly, not, would I? no, no, I'm certainly not. No, I'm not a member of any party. But who would you generally support? I think if you're going to voted, do a bit of political commentary, I have maybe, voted tell for us. all of them. I voted for Fianna Fáil people, I voted for Fianna Gael people, and I voted for independence. So you play the man, not the ball? Uh, well, unfortunately, yeah. I suppose that's what's wrong yeah. in, in Ireland, since uh, you, you, you vote for the closest guy to you who will deliver on the the promises and the local issues. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of politics, I mean, when, when Fianna Fáil took over, I mean, in, in the gory years, I mean, it was a bit like uh, take teenagers being left the house for the weekend, you know, and, uh, you know, they weren't told what to do and, and they just went to party and everything was in excess and, you know, they showed off and, and then, of course, the following morning, panic and there's a hangover and there's a little bit of remorse, but, but it's mainly panic and, you know, the first rule in crisis is to blame somebody else and that's what we've got. And, mm -hmm. But I'm, I, I'm in rural Ireland and uh, rural Rural Ireland was, so you talk about the Celtic Tiger and what have we got to show for Celtic yeah. Tiger years. We haven't got much, you know, but certainly we've got very little in rural Ireland. I think uh, yeah. the Celtic Tiger passed by rural Ireland and I'm, like I said, passionate. Well, you got a lot of ghost estates, didn't you? No, we didn't, in, in, believe it or not. In, 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 in the area where I am, in Kinmare, which is the most beautiful town, yeah. in, as you're familiar with it, yeah. we have no ghost estate, but what we have is about 400 houses. And driving down into Sneem there, is there not a yellow kind of a, a, a abandoned estate down there on the right of or we, I, might, I might think it is somewhere else. You're spot on, but I was talking yeah. about Kinmare, Brendan. Okay, go on, go on, <laughs> sorry. <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Khmer was a Khmer is a beautiful town, absolutely yeah. fabulous. But it's 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 just there's no ghost estates. But what we had was about four or five hundred houses built under Section 23 tax schemes, which were basically tax dodges, where the estate was occupied by four builders. The four builders, the, the builders bought four of them, got four of them. The accountant took three of them. His mate, the solicitor, got another two. And what we have is 80 percent of the houses in Khmer unoccupied now for 12 months a year, and that's that's wrong. John. But in rural but like Ireland, us, I mean, our city slickers need somewhere nice and quaint to go on, on for us. Summer holidays. Do you know Paddy, Paddy Sheehan, who's now retiring from, from South, uh, the Fine Gael TD in, in West Cork, and Paddy Sheehan once described the Mizzen Peninsula as being occupied by briars, bachelors and bullocks. <laughs> <laughs> and in a way he was half right. And you look at now, is that analogy uh, correct to this day? The bullocks are gone because farmer, farmers have been squeezed off the land. They were over-regulated, the price didn't. The bachelors... Oh, the bachelors were neglected. I mean, the bachelors yeah. were neglected. And we're left with the briars. And the briars are covering the, the few ghost estates and, and, the, and, the, and the holiday homes of the speculators. That's right. It. Jesus Grimm. You, you mentioned the bachelors being, being neglected. Um, I know that you, you were a public in the pub is leased out now, isn't it? And, and I know that you feel, like a lot of people, that I, I suppose a combination of the, the smoking ban and the drink driving laws have kind of isolated a lot of those uh, farmers. Yeah, I just believe that an awful lot of the legislation that was brought in in this country was urban-based legislation. And obviously you're against drink driving. I remember in the pub, I mean, I remember the first night when the smoking ban was brought in. It was a wet Monday night. I had two customers in the bar. There were two smokers, and they stood outside the door in the rain smoking in a big empty bar. In. And I'm not... W would you not have said to them, lads, it's okay? Lads, we won't. No, they weren't going to break the law. But, I mean, you, you, you go to drink driving, I mean... In my bar, three, I had three customers, regular customers, within a three-mile radius of the bar. The rest were beyond three miles. That basically meant that every one of them had to drive. And obviously, once the drink driving laws came in, particularly the old people, the, the, the bachelor farmers living yeah. up the mountains, they never moved out again. They were in fear of being caught. They were in fear because the car was their livelihood. The pub was their livelihood and it was gone. And did they come, did they chance it? No, they didn't. Did they come down drink again? No, they didn't. And they lived in isolation. A lot of them have died since. And on top of that, you had, 
you had the, the legislation brought in where children weren't allowed into the bar after a certain time. And it's, I, I can understand why and the reasonings why, but I mean, in rural communities, the bar was the community centre. The yeah. bar was the focal point. The bars were well run and they were well maintained. And now they're gone. And the bars were what attracted a lot of people to Ireland. And, yeah, and, yeah, you yeah, know, and I yeah. see in the latest campaign by Board Fault, there's no mention of the Irish bar, the crack and whatever. But then maybe I'm not surprised because we lost our identity during the Celtic Tiger years where we felt that a bar should serve paninis and lattes and cappuccinos and, and shouldn't have a fellow yeah. sitting at the side of the bar drinking a pint. And, yeah. you know. yeah. The other, I suppose. The I other hope I'm not coming across as being angry now, Brendan. No, no, you're, you're not. not, you're not, you're not. <laughs> no, the philosophical, I would say. Thank Philosoph you. Kerry men are too smart ever to get really angry. You see, they just kind of snipe quietly. Um, <laughs> so.